So I'm going to talk about the SESTA vocabulary service and Taina Jaskelainen from Finnish Social Science Data Archive. I'll give an overview of the service and talk about technical infrastructure, two functionalities, the main goal, and whether it's accessible outside of SESTA. And then I'll have some screenshots. So the tool is funded by, the, by SESTA. It's a consortium of social sciences data archive. And it's developed by Gesis at, at Germany, which is a data archive also. And the original user requirements were made by UK Data Service, Finnish Social Science Data Archive, and the DDI Alliance. For those who do not know, DDI, DDI Alliance produces the DDI documentation standard that is internationally used, uh, especially by social science um, in the social sciences domain for, for describing uh, research data. And currently the user management and content management of the tool is done by my organization. Currently there are about 27 vocabularies published in the tool and some of them have up to 11 different language versions. And this is the link to the tool. About technical infrastructure. The service has recently been moved to a totally new infrastructure, which is currently in final testing stage and will probably be released in October. The, the previous version um, had some challenges and drawbacks also because of the mixed front end and back end. And therefore it has been uh, changed to a totally different software, which has a separate front end and back end. And so the back end is, well, you can read this, the slide. I'm really not a technical person, but just presenting them. And there are a lot of improvements, including code quality and other issues with this new software platform and so this is a picture i'm not sure if you can how much of this you can see but the, at the front end there are two separate tools which is the editor and then there's a the publication which is the browsing and download interface and also at the back end you, you have these two two separate tools and looking at this as a non-technical person, a lot of JSON files seem to be used. And so this is, this is the new version. And the browsing interface, where you can, of course, browse and search vocabularies, and then you can download. So at the moment, we have three formats where you can download. It is COS, RDF, HTML, and PDF. And of the concepts within the vocabulary, we have three information elements, which is the code value, and then you have the descriptive term. The code value is the same in all language versions, and the descriptive term is what is translated, and then you have the definition. And for reasons that I will explain later, we have a human readable version history and comparison table between previous and current version and REST APIs. Uh, the current solution is the, the resolving the URLs. So this is a technical challenge. And then the editor. The editor is where the vocabularies are created and translated and versioned. Entry to the service is, is by roles. So you need to have a certain role, which is specified by agency. So for example, currently there the DDI Alliance is one agency and SESTA is another. But one user may have more than one role. Of course, there are then the system uh, manager and the content manager that have bigger roles, but normally, you would have a role which is specified in this way. Uh, so 
you have this kind of user management and then you have the agency management meaning that you add in the information about the agency the link and and stuff like that and the tool is built in a way that you can have on online access you can have several users at the same time and there's no installation needed or, and the users who use the tool do not need to know anything about scores so more functionalities for the editor the editor close that when, when you publish it, when, when you are creating a new version of a vocabulary, the editor clones the previous version, so in, in all languages. And then the system also aids in producing the human readable system by, by providing change logs and then providing this comparison table. Sorry, may I jump in? Questions yes. or afterwards question? Um, how, uh, how do you like to do this, Juliana? Well, I prefer to keep the questions at the end okay, uh, of the session, but uh, you can, I think that at the end of Tana, Taina's presentation probably yes. will have. And please okay. uh, add all, all questions that come to mind into chat because yeah. that would be fine. And we, we have the CVS developer, I hope. I hope <laughs> Sigit is uh, in and can answer the technical questions. Okay, thank you. I will put them to the chat. Yeah. Uh, so the, the system compared to Walkbench, for example, which we heard about in the previous session, which is uh, Walkbench is a, a versatile tool, uh, a general purpose tool. Um, this is sort of made for a more restricted use case, this, this tool. And, and there are these constraints, like you say, that it checks that the certain man elements that have been deemed mandatory uh, are there before it allows publication. So, um, yes. Uh, and for example, for, for different language versions, you need to have the descriptive term translated. So if, if, you, if there's no translation for the descriptive term, it doesn't allow publication, but definition, uh, code definition translations, or say concept definitions, they are not enforced, so they are, they are not mandatory. And then uh, for the creation purpose, the download and export is also possible for those that are in drafts in editor because you might want to show the vocabulary to someone or ask ask for review or, or comments or stuff like that so you can export the, the vocabularies in the same format as you can do in the browsing interface and then there's a bit of automation within the tool that when you press on publish uh, the system collects information about the license, produces the URN and citation and copyright information from information entered somewhere in, in, in the system. So, about the main goals for the tool. So, as I said, this had a, a, a specific use case. Uh, it is not meant to be a thesaurus tool. So I think the, the largest vocabulary that we have now at, in this tool is about at maximum 120 concepts. So it is not a tool for, for thesaurus that are thousands of terms. So there are broader and narrower terms, but no related terms or synonyms. Synonyms might come at some point, but I, I don't think this is really a tool for thesaurus. So no related term. And why? Uh, and at this point, because someone in the previous asked why SESTA is using two tools. At this point, when this tool was developed, we, we tested Walkpens, but it was a previous version of Walkpens 2. And it had certain restrictions that it didn't, I can't remember now what they were. It was something to do with not enough roles and not not seeing always not seeing what you were translating so 
uh, as I'm, but I, I think for Pens 3 now it, it's it's much improved version probably. Uh, and and the use cases for for set standard that they they we wanted to be able to to have translate many of the DDI vocabularies uh, for using in metadata to, to have harmonized metadata for, for SESTA catalog and for these catalogs that where you collect information from, from different places. And, and these vocabularies are often, often about maybe research methods. Uh, and and uh, it means that in, in, in a thesaurus, you are describing the subjects, but, but um, results, research methods, for example, if you have mode of collection or something like that, um, you need to choose one. So in a way, you, you are not, not thinking about at concept level, you are thinking concept within a particular vocabulary which is covering a particular area totally so so and this is why the, the the table format is considered important and the human readable version history is important because if you want to keep your legacy metadata updated to the latest you need to know what to update yes and then about the sesta strategy for access to the tool one possibility would be to host uh, your own vocabularies within the tool. So, um, so create an agency and ask for, for access rights and, and a particular role for SESTA. And then you could host your and manage your own vocabularies within the tool. Uh, but SESTA also provides access in other ways. You can run it on your own infrastructure or you can download the software and, and adapt it to your own needs. Like for example, cases are done with the Pesos Thesaurus Manager, which is sort of work in progress at this moment. So a few screenshots. So this is the, the public browsing interface with two filters by agency and by language. The CVS2 eventually might have a bit different look at this, but, but it basically it's the same, it could be the same information. And then of course, because you have different language versions, you can search in any language, like it said, and get probably, I think it's survey something. In, in French, if you, if you search with the French term, it gives you and highlights highlights where this particular, so not normal search function actually. And then this is a, a screenshot of, of the HTML export. So you have something defined, the CV, what's it about, and the name information and the, and the URNs. And then you have the table where you have the code value, the code descriptive term and code definition. So it would be from, from thinking from the person who is producing a data set description and, and um, sitting at their desk and thinking about, okay, I have this data set, but how, how was it collected? What is the mode of collection term that I, that I need to describe it with? And so they will look at the table and, and see how to describe it. And then this is the comparison table between previous version. And, and as you can see, this is not something that you, you, you would like to see or would like to want to have for the source with, with 3,000 or 20,000 terms. Um, it shows on the left, the previous version and on the right, the new current version. So you can see on, on line to that the CV definition has been extended and CV notes added or on row eight that okay the definition has been changed so and in addition this is the human readable readable 
version, which you can see in the versions tab that, okay, a code has been added and what code it was and what code has been deleted and what, and if a code value has been changed, how it has been changed and so forth. Uh, 